This is Zane Emerson, Nature Explorer here, and I'm going to teach you about the salmon life cycle. Every salmon struggles all its life, even as an egg. In this video, we'll look at the Chinook salmon life cycle. Let's start with the egg stage. This happens in freshwater streams and rivers. The female switches her tail to create the red, the nest. She lays the eggs, a male fertilizes them, and the female covers the eggs up. Then both adult salmon die. She lays about 5,000 eggs. After two or three months, the eggs hatch into albins. The albins stay under the red because they cannot do things for themselves. This is called the yolk sac. The albins feed off it. The yolk sac contains a balanced diet of sugar, protein, vitamins, and minerals. After about a month, they move on to the fry stage. The yolk sac has now been absorbed. The fry are now about the size of a fur needle. They must now learn to survive on their own. Fry feed up tiny bugs and decompose adult salmon. The fry live in their stream for an entire year. During that time, the fry grow into par. Par are also called juvenile fish or fingerlings. That's because they're about the size of an adult's finger. Fingerlings have scales covered in mucus to protect them from disease and stripes in the backs to help them hide from predators. It is now spring. It is time for them to migrate downstream. Out of the 5,000 eggs, only 750 make it to migration. As they move downstream, the stripes fade and they become smolts. Smolts move from freshwater streams to mix salt and freshwater estuaries. The Chinook salmon swim from the middle fork of the Sand River to the Sand River. Then they enter the Snake River. Next, the smolts get to the reservoir of the first dam, the Lower Grant Dam. After three other dams, the smolts get to the place where the Snake River joins up with the Columbia River, where they have to pass four more dams. Ten to fifteen percent of the smolts don't make it past each dam. But how do these salmon get past the dams? At some dams, juvenile fish swim over top of dam spillways. At others, they are collected and transported around the dams in barges and tank trucks. Some dams use fish bypass systems to send the salmon around the dam. One time in the 1970s, salmon were flown down the lower St. Columbia rivers and dropped from an airplane. After the dams, the sand passed cities to get to the ocean. After all eight dams, only the 200 smolts from the original 5,000 eggs make it to the ocean. Salmon face other problems besides dams. One of those problems is predators. Salmon are preyed on by many animals, like bears, people, many birds, and other fish. One of the top preys for salmon are the pike minnow, a medium-sized fish. To eat salmon, pike minnow wait below a dam and eat the salmon as they pass by. Two other big salmon eaters are the Caspian tern and the double-crusted cormorant. They can eat up to 20 million salmon a year. The last big salmon in danger are sea lions. They can eat thousands of salmon as the salmon are waiting to pass through the dams. The sea lions just sit there, nab the salmon, and eat them. After getting past these obstacles, the salmon get to the ocean. The Chinook salmon live in the ocean for one and a half to four and a half years. They are now adult salmon. They have pink bellies from eating a lot of shrimp. The adult salmon are now going to swim back home. Scientists don't exactly know how they find their home again. As they swim up, they have to go over the dam, so People have installed fish ladders to help them do this. Each fish ladder is different. Compare the first picture, which is from John Day Dam, to the second picture, which is from Bonneville Dam. In some fish ladders, the salmon jump over the stairs. In other fish ladders, they go under the stairs, where each opening is a foot taller than the last one. Only five adult salmon from the original 5,000 eggs make home spawn. The adult salmon pair up and spawn the very same way their pants did. And the cycle starts all over again. Thanks for watching. Bye.